that they can be a playoff contender. Now, we I don't think any of us, after one preseason game where they played well again, are totally sold on the idea that this is the team we're going to see on the field every week, week in and week out, that this is the kind of performance we're going to see. If it is, this is going to be a great season for the Packers. It's still an if, but and it's a big if, but hey, more and more, that's what we want to see. Uh, great performance. Congratulations to the offense, coaching staff for some real good play calls. I thought it was a well-called, well-played game for the most part, and, and that's what we want to see now and in the future. Defense, uh, after watching the Broncos go 99 yards on us for a touchdown, mostly running right down the pipe, we need Ryan Pickett back in the lineup and back on the field. We need our defensive line healthy. It, and I've been saying it since the beginning, that could be our Achilles heel. It could make our great defense very mediocre. Of course, we need A.J. Hawk back, too. Uh, I don't think Brandon Chiller is a good open field tackler. I think he's doing a, you know, a bang-up job for getting kind of thrown in in a position that's not his particular strength. Um, and I give him credit for that, but we really need to solidify that front of our defense so that we don't have guys bursting through the line at full speed, hardly touched. And uh, the guys that are in and playing need to play better and make better decisions. But, of course, that being said, um, we had a, you know, a, a team that went out, and I believe they had uh, several, like four third and, and short, third and one, situations that our defense stopped the Broncos, who remember are this zone-blocking team, known for being able to plug any running back in and make them successful with that scheme. And, of course, on that one drive, they were, they looked like, uh, they looked exactly like Terrell Davis in the, the Super Bowl with the Packers and the Broncos, just going straight through us, and there was nothing we could do. But, on several occasions, on third and short, we stuck them. And so I think it's more of a matter of getting the right people in, the right packages called, and having our players healthy than developing players or having people just making big mistakes. So once again, it's, it is a negative, but it's one with a very big upside. It could be, become a positive real quick when we get our defensive line healthy. Um, uh, the good A-Rod... A Great corrections after a bad game to come back and just flat play well. Uh, th there's no substitute for not making the same mistake twice. Because a young quarterback is always going to make mistakes. It's the ones he makes two and three and four times that start to erode his confidence. So uh, my hat's off to Aaron Rodgers for a fantastic game. It, it, it just doesn't get much better than that. He did very, very well. Um, Defense, we I'd like to see more of Aaron Rouse. I would like to see more of Pat Lee, and I would like to see more of Abdul Hodge. Those guys are out there making plays, and it's sometimes hard to tell because at times they're making plays against the second team. But uh, what a, a great performance by these guys, and so far a great preseason. It's cool, it's fantastic to see Abdul Hodge out there flying around like we all knew he was capable of, healthy, and so. Uh, once again, just, just keep up the good work. Uh, also, Craig Lumpkin, uh, what a fantastic performance by him. A great play on fourth and one. Uh, the kind of guy we know we can go to, and he's going to slip it into the end zone with uh, just uh, a jock removal move on the defender to slip right by him and walk into the end zone. And to go back to that Terrell Davis comment I made earlier, to give the Denver fans the Terrell Davis salute was absolutely priceless. And uh, so uh, Craig Lumpkin, uh, looking like a real performer, he's a guy who just knows how to find holes and run with the right pad level, get him his body behind his weight and move the pocket and at the same time be able to make moves. So what a great performance by him. So that pretty much wraps up to a day. I do want to make a Packer link up spotlight. Um, Remember, you don't have to go to NFL.com to get the game highlights. Just go to Packer Link Up, mouse over the media tab, and make one click on the game highlights, and Packer Link Up will bring it up for you. We can get you there. So that's all you've got to do to watch the highlights of Aaron Rodgers 
in the Broncos game. Uh, go once again to the mouse over media in the top right tab and click on the game highlights and it'll pop right up for you and all you got to do is play it right from the NFL site. So you can listen to the highlights and I want you to note one thing. and you, You've known this from last year's game against the Broncos at Invesco. Listen to the crowd go wild whenever Aaron Rodgers completed a pass for the Packers scored. It is for all the Broncos fans out there who say that their fans are the best. All you have to do is go to the Packers game at Denver and listen to the volume of the crowd when Green Bay scores. And it sounds like a home game for Green Bay. And I guarantee you, you will never hear anything like that when the Broncos come to Lambeau. The Packers fans are the number one fans in all of the NFL. Bar none, hands down, contest over, game over, that's all there is to it. And the proof is in the pudding, guys. If you can't get people out for your own games at home, and we're filling up your stands and cheering for our Packers at Invesco, it proves we've got the best fans. So, hey, go to the go to the media, click on the highlights, and listen to our fans cheer on our team, just like we did from our living room. So, uh, until next time, the 10 o'clock edition, uh, as always, go Pack!